Apostle T.B. Walker, I want to welcome you once again to Disciples of Faith Global Outreach. We are in our uh, Sunday service, and I'm so glad for those that are tuning in, for those that are here that are with us right now. And I'm glad for those that are going to be coming with us prophetically. I know that you're on your way. So I'm just looking forward to what God is going to do today. So I so, want to give a shout out to my mother. She's in the hospital right now. I want to ask you if you will lift up prayers for Pastor Willie Mae Hill. She, uh, you know, she's dealing with some high blood pressure, but I know that everything is going to be okay. I trust in God, but I just want, we know men ought to always pray. So we want to lift up prayer just even in confirmation of what, you know, I know that God is going to do and, and, and that is heal. So I just thank God for each and every one of you all that are here. I'm going to be reading today out of the book of Revelation, chapter number two. I'm going to start, start at verse, at, well, start at verse number five and end in verse number five. We're just going to read one verse today. That's once again out of the book of Revelation, chapter number two, start at verse number five. Now, you know, before we start, I want to just encourage you once again to help us in this ministry, be a part of this ministry, support this ministry by sharing. You know, one of our motto is reaching the world one share at a time. And we need you to help us by simply uh, reaching out by pressing the share button. One of the ways that we reach the world is by the fact that we use this great tool called the Internet and specifically here Facebook to simply press one button and all of your friends and all, people on your timeline and people that you don't even know will be have an opportunity to be able to get that good part that cannot be taken away. If it's a blessing to you, know this, that you're not the only one that'll be blessed by the word of God. The whole world needs the word of God. And it is also part of the great commission that God has given us to go out into the highways and the byways, to preach this word, to share this word to all nations. So that's what we're doing right now. And even in baptizing them, we're baptizing these them even in, in this gospel, by the washing of the word. So we just thank God for what he's doing there. And I'm going to ask right now that for those that have their Bibles, that you'll just turn with me to Revelation chapter 2. I'm going to read verse number 5. And then we're going to jump into it after prayer to see what the Lord has to say concerning this particular word. Know this. You're not here by accident. This is not just a happenstance. You didn't just wake up and just decide even by yourself to just decide to, you know, I'm going to watch Apostle Walker today. I'm going to check out Disciples of Faith Global Outreach. You know, even when you go to our website at disciplesoffaith.life, you know, it's not just a simple decision to just troll around or to just, you know, browse and peruse to see what's out there. God's drawing you to his word. And just know this, no man comes to the Father unless he's drawn. It's not just being up late at night. It's not just, you know, man, something just led me to it. I get that. But I want to expose to you and, and explain to you who that something is because he is a person. He is called the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is leading you to grow. The Spirit is leading you to eat the word of God, to drink the water of the word of God and to allow God to increase. So the Bible says one plants, one waters, but it's God who gives increase. And I'm expecting great, great increase today. Let's get into this word. I'm going to read the word. I'm going to be coming out of the uh, New King James Version. Uh, but but I will be interchanging that with various different versions, specifically the King James, because I like some of the words that are some of the word choices that are used in the King James. Let's read. It says, uh, consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you right now for this anointed time, this moment that you were ordained before the foundation of the world. God, we bless you right now for each and every person that, that is on and that's going to be coming on, that's going to hear. God, we pray right now the anointing would permeate even the very airwaves, that it would permeate even the, the, the very internet waves. God, that for those that are, that are watching, that they will be impacted by your word. So, God, we just thank you right now that healing has already been sent out. We thank you right now that deliverance has already been sent out. We thank you right now for rapt attention from your people, God, that, that are called by your name, that are humbling themselves right now and are seeking your face. God, we're praying even right now and that you would hear from heaven and heal the land. And you promised to do that. And we believe you right now. So every area of healing and deliverance that's needed, God, we know that even through your word that you're able to do it. So we're sending it out right now. And those that are sharing 
your word in obedience, God, even to the command to go out into the highways and the byways and to reach this gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. God, we just thank you right now, even for the fingers that are going to press those buttons, God, that are going to share this, this word out through to, to the masses. So we just thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, <clears throat> take a look. I want to recap a little bit concerning the situation here. Uh, that Jesus is dealing with as he deals with now the Ephesian church. One of the things that he talks to about this church that is in Ephesus, that is in the, is a hot, in the midst of a hotbed of immorality, he recognized that the people seem like they're right on point. That there are people who he recognized that don't put up with evil workers at all. That these are people who test the scripture. They have checked out people who call themselves apostles. They've seen imposters. It's been exposed uh, that those that have come, that, that, that they call themselves something, but they actually are not. They were calling themselves apostles, sent ones. They were establishing doctrine, even a new gospel. And Paul says, you, you know, you guys didn't put up with that. You saw it right from the bat. You discerned it by the word of God and you recognized that it was not true and you would not allow it. You either withdrew yourself from it or you actually cast those very same people out with their spirit. So we just thank God that we were able to see here what, that, that John is revealing to us through the words of God, what will he's actually seeing. But at the end of the day, he says, I have something against you. I have one thing against you. And that is that you've left your first love. That, that's what we're left with in verse number four. Now we begin to get Jesus saying something completely different. He says, and I want you to get this. Uh, the, the New King James says, consider how far you've fallen. Or it says, remember, therefore, in the King James. Now, I want you to look at this. It says, I want you to remember how far you've fallen. I want you to repent. And I want you to do your first works or do the things you did at first. So the first thing that he says to the Corinth, to this Ephesian church, rather, is that they are to remember that they're literally to go back. And I want you to get this because this is not small. That the reality is that Jesus is saying, I want you to go back into your memory banks to remember what the fellowship was like before you got to the place where you are right now. That the truth be told here that Jesus is saying, the memories are going to be the healing tool that God is going to use. That literally the bomb that, that, that this church was going to need was already implanted in their minds. And Jesus now comes and says, well, it's not going to be some outward miracle that's going to happen. You don't need another prayer meeting that's going to happen. He says, I want you now to change your focus as you're focusing on all these other legalistic things. As you're focusing on, on all these other things that seem right, you've missed the very area that you need to be focused on. So he now comes and says, the healing in the loveless state that you're in right now, the healing is actually on the inside of you. It's actually in your mind and you have the ability to access the healing because I've already placed it in you. By the things that have actually happened from the past, if you stand back. So you know what, when the Bible says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, you gotta understand when you're standing still, it is not uh, reflecting on what you see because what you see at the very moment that you're talking about it is something that is prophetic. It's what you're about to see. But when you stand still before you see, what are you seeing? You're seeing what has already happened before. Your faith allows you to stand because you are dealing with the memories of the victories that God has actually had in your life triumphing over you, over issues that have come to try to take you down, over you remembering the, the affection and the relationship that you actually had with him before you got to where you are right now. So Jesus is saying, well, you have the, the ability to get to it and so all you now have to do is access it now how can i access it well you can access it because you placed it where it is the reality is that jesus is saying listen it's not lost it's left and since you left it go back to where you left it do you understand that the 
spirit of the Lord, though he's saying I'm not there, he's saying I'm still somewhere. And I want to tell you where I'm at, where I am. I'm in the place where you were. All the emptiness that you feel right now, all the works that are done that are not pleasing in any way because they're lacking the very essence and substance of who God himself is, which is love. When that's missing, there's a problem there. So he says, I want you to go back and remember, this is not to do something for the Lord, but this is now meant to do something for this church, that they were dying and didn't actually recognize it that they were drying up and didn't even know it they had a commitment to truth which was good but it wasn't motivated by love the engine was wrong so that means that the obedience that they had toward God was incomplete and was not pleasing to God and I want you to get that they were doing the right things but their heart was far from the right place that they were doing the right action but their heart was not in the right direction so the Lord I mean and when you look at this you begin to see the the premium that God places on the love that man is meant to have for him when you understand how powerful this is and how big this is you understand that the Lord says listen I want you this this is meant to exceed the love you have even for your closest relatives he even comes back and says this is meant to exceed the love you have for your spouse for father and for mother and that even in Corinthians chapter 13 verse 3 I, I believe it is it, Paul comes back and he says that even if you voluntarily die as a martyr that he comes and says if it's absent of love it is nothing he doesn't come back and say well it's commendable you know we need to take a look at it and, and give it a couple points and a couple stripes no no he says if you don't have love you have nothing that you can preach you can you can do every sound off like you're an angel but he says without love you're just clattering around you're just making noisy sounds you, you're just a noise maker so when you begin to look at this Jesus comes back and says, I want to give you the diagnosis. I'm coming back to you and I'm letting you know I've cut you open and here's what I've seen. Now, here's the surgery that has to be done and the surgery has to be done by you. The cutting open has already been done by God. The exposure has already been done. They are so sick that they cannot possibly expose themselves. So Jesus has come and said, now, I've exposed the problem and now I'm giving you the solution. And the first step to your healing is to remember. Now, and it says to remember from where you have fallen. Now, he says, I want you to evaluate in your mind where you have fallen. And I want you to evaluate the value that you've placed on the position where you are right now in comparison to where you were. Right. So he says this now has to be your focus. One of the things that happens, the church has so many things going on. You know, there's so many, so many projects that are going on. So, so many visions that, that are there that, you know, I don't have time to stop. And the Lord said, listen, I want you to cut out the building project. I want you to stop everything that you got going on. I want you to shut the choir down. I want you to shut down everything. And I want you to get back to what's really, really real. I want you to stop and begin to, we don't have time to focus on love. We got racism going on out here. We don't have time to focus on loving God that, that that can't be our focus because we have people that need to be educated we don't have time to focus on God. Violence is everywhere. The, the devil seems like he's encroaching everywhere. I know the Bible said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and we ought to always pray. And I've heard, I know all of those things, but I'm saying after the prayer, what are we going to do? I'm saying once we get up off of our knees, what are we going to do? You have forgotten that being on your knees was something, that you actually are doing something. And the Lord says, stop and get back to your first love. Stop and get back to remembering how far you've fallen. The last time, when was the last time you really had serious prayer? When was the last time you did the things that you were called and ordained to actually do? We are not a social organization. We are an organization of believers, an organism that have gathered together to love God. That's the reality of what we need to do. And when we start looking and saying, well, love God, yes, but we've got the feeding program. Yeah, let's love God, no doubt about it, But and that's important, but it's not more important than, 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 than marriage counseling. It's not more important than the singles ministry. I mean, loving God, yes, but we don't we 
have to get the people financially stable? Don't we need to teach them, you know, find, don't we need to give them economic education? Listen, let me tell you what you need to do. You were designed and made for worship and don't forget that. And we can sometimes leave worship and really do a good job in the community and forget the relationship that we're supposed to have with God. So everybody's getting what God is supposed to get that the Lord said. So there's no focus on the love of me. Listen, understand this. They were in a backslidden state. He said, listen, I want you to remember where, from whence you have fallen. You got to be able to see this because, and they need this because this was happening to them unaware that, listen, they were supposed to be scared. And there's some people that need to hear this right now and realize you got into a dull place and you didn't even know it that you it's being revealed to you right now that your fire is almost out and you didn't even know it listen you know you know growing up i've watched scary movies right and, and i watched a lot of horror flicks and you know one of the one of the the real i mean i think one of the scariest places in a horror movie is not actually when the monster gets you, but it really is the carelessness on your part that might have opened the door. I'm talking about like when you got to keep the fire going, right? And he can't come in if the fire is going. And then you recognize that you wake up when there's just an ember and you see those red eyes in the forest and you start putting some something on the fire. And just before the monster gets to you, the fire starts, you know, blazing up again and you're just inches away and the skin scary part was that if you had stayed asleep just a little while longer, he would have crept in beyond the barrier that was meant to keep him out and he would have gotten you and he would have eaten you up. Listen, there's some people right now that need to recognize your fire is almost out. The monster with the red eyes is right out there and you ought to be shouting glory. God, I thank you that you didn't let my fire go out, that you shook me right at the la at the nick of time to let me know. Put some more logs on that fire. He's right out there. He crept in unaware. They were in a backslidden state and had no knowledge. They weren't moving the needle in the kingdom forward at all. They were in a regression. Listen, I want you to understand. It says, I, I want you to look at and remember from where you are falling, right? Not, not where you were falling, but where you are falling. Now, the R, when you begin to look at this, it, it's the perfect present tense that's used in the Greek right that's here it, it is in the now it means that it's that it's not a, a state or a progress it is an actual state that you're in right there it, 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 it means that it has existing results in other words it's already been tabulated the president of the United States thought he might not actually have lost the race, uh, you know, a week ago. But now that it's been tabulated, we now can actually say you have lost. Well, now that everything has been tabulated because Jesus is now coming and he is now saying, no, 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 I'm telling you now, these aren't results that have to be recounted. This is, these are the actual numbers. And when we look at the actual numbers and this is not a process, you are fallen. You, it's not like you will fall. You are fallen. He's saying, listen, you should be in a much deeper relationship, a much more abiding, trusting relationship with me than you are, than, than you really are in right now. And it's difficult for some people to receive. It's difficult for some people who are thinking, I'm doing the right things and God, here's what I'm doing. And some people get this message and they miss it. Some people get this message and they, they deal with the depth. Some people get this message and they'll hear words that step out to them. They might like the flow that's there, right? You know, I mean, I might be animated about this thing. So some people will miss this, but listen, let me tell you something. You, we miss what we're missing because we focus on what we're doing and not with what we're not doing. And this letter was not about what they're doing. It's about what they're not doing. And listen, when you get into a mindset of showing off what you do and not examining yourself, but listen, when the Bible says examine yourself, it's examining you for what you're lacking and not what you have. And most of us are so boastful and prideful that we are only dealing with what we're doing. And there are people right now that are hearing this message right now and are saying, well, here's what I'm doing and are missing what the Lord is saying you're missing. He's not coming here as your chief 
cheerleader. He's not here to come and clap for you. There will be a day where there'll be praise all around, where we'll all shout glory. But it's not today. Today, there's a refiner's fire that is in the earth called the Holy Spirit, and he's coming to reprove the world of sin. And the problem comes when you think the world being reproved of sin does not include you. When you think the Lord exposing sin does not include you. When you think that you're God's wrecking ball, you're his flashlight, you can see in everybody else's life but not your own, do you understand the damage that the Lord is saving the Ephesian church from because he's saying, now shine the light on you. I'm checking you out. You got discernment because you could discern that they were not apostles, but you couldn't discern the state of your own heart. You could not discern your own condition. And that's a huge problem that you're seeing in the church that we're not able to concern discern our own condition so the lord says listen i want you to remember from where you have fallen i want you to remember how you used to be in love how you used to care and not just how you used to pray and worship god but i, I want you to remember how you used to uh, care about fellowship with people I remember, I want you to remember how, how excited you were. Listen, I, and I want you to get this. This is stuff you need to do, start doing right now. This is stuff that needs to happen right now. If you're eating with the hogs, listen, the prodigal son had to come back. The prodigal son left, took all of his, you know, he said, father, I want my inheritance. And, and he took his inheritance and, and he ate it all up in riotous living, drinking and, and, and prostitution probably, and, and all kinds of other riotous living that was out there. But you know, the prodigal son, returns he comes back and he receives a, a a great welcome but i want you to understand how he came back the bible says that he came to himself that in other words that the who he his identity his true identity his true love and his true source of power was actually implanted in him before he ever got stupid before he ever got foolish before he ever got arrogant the lord had already planted in a fail safe he had already put in a switch on the inside of him that if he ever afflicted himself now the lord doesn't say i'm gonna flick the switch for you he simply says listen when you get down there eating with the hogs thinking you steal something listen and because it had to happen where he had to have it get it exposed within himself you ain't really what you think you are if you were look where you are but isn't it amazing on your knees in a pig pen that there's something in you when you're called by god that you can just flick on that will remind you it doesn't get you out of the pig pen yet it doesn't make it doesn't make you smell any better it doesn't change the condition condition that you're currently in it changes the condition of your mind it changes the attitude and when your mind changes and your attitude changes you then begin to refuse to stay in places that don't qualify to hold a mind and an attitude like you have when his mind and his attitude change he began to look at his environment and say what am i doing here notice that the angels never come to the mighty men of valor and pull them out they they just say, get your head together, mighty man of valor. What in the world are you doing here? When the Lord sees Gideon, he doesn't come and say, Gideon, get out. He says, Gideon, check your surroundings out. Is this really you? Is this, is this really you? Is this where you're supposed to be? Elijah, you're in a cave hiding from, from Jezebel. He's a mighty man of valor. What are you doing here? Check yourself. Is this you? This attitude that you're walking in, this hatred that you're walking in, this loving of everybody in the church, but having spoken to your family members in 25 years, not sure if you don't hate your sister or not, not sure if you can't stand your, your brother or your, your, your father or your mother. Listen, all of that loving everybody else, but not doing what God is saying. He says, listen, remember, remember who you are. Remember from whence you have fallen. You have the power to know where you're supposed to be. You may not be able to make yourself get there, but isn't it something to know who you are? That even in the down spot, even in the dark spot, even in the deepest hole, he's coming to the Ephesian church and saying, there's still yet light there. there they're still an ember. And he's saying, you put a log on the fire. See, when you begin to understand this, the Lord is saying, I'm empowering you to empower yourself. Listen, this is wonderful because there may be times when we may not have anyone to empower us. But when you do like David did, David encouraged himself 
in the Lord. Listen, if I stay out here, I'm, I'm going to be backslidden. I'm going to still worship. I'm going to still praise, but my heart ain't going to be right. And listen, there are people right now that know your heart is not in this thing. You just doing this. This is how it works. And you've been saying, Lord, what am I supposed to do? He says, listen, stop for a second and go back and focus because listen, I'm the same God that you used to love without having any money. I'm the same God that you used to pray to even when folks used to hate on you. I'm the same God before you got popular. I'm the same God that you loved even when they were bullying you and talking crazy to you let's go back before you got the the bins let's go back before you got the house let's go back before it became about prosperity let's go back a little bit before it became about healing before i was nothing but a doctor or an atm machine but when i was god to you when i was a friend to you when you wanted fellowship with me so when you begin to see this he says that's the first step now the second step he comes in and says now i need you to repent now get this because this is really important and i want to make sure everybody gets this in this repentance, this is not God saying, I'm commanding you to feel sorry. Matter of fact, he's not commanding you to actually feel anything. You know, repentance does not have that in it. Now, if you say you're sorry, you know, I mean, it, repentance and saying you're sorry in the earth has a lot to do with how you look and shaking hands. Y'all shake hands now. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, now you see you broke that. I'm sorry. And that's how it is. And you know what? We like to make sure I can look at you and tell like, are you did you look sorry? Did are you are you really feeling sorry? That that matters. Right. And, and listen, let me tell you something. Attitude does matter. But let me tell you what the Lord is actually saying. He's saying, listen, I need you to actually repent. And repentance is to recognize your wrong direction. Right. That's the first thing. He says, I need you to recognize it. There are people who say they're sorry because they see you sad. Right. Seeing you sad but means I, if I say I'm sorry because you're sad, that means I am doomed to do this again because I'm only moved by the sadness and not the understanding of the wrongness. The first thing I've got to do is recognize my wrong and then to immediately change my direction. Now, th th if you're driving and you're trying to get somewhere, you know, th you're not a fool. The reason why you're five miles off is because you had not come to grips with the fact that you're going in the wrong direction. I mean, listen, there's some things that have happened that shown you where they said, if you get to this, you're probably going in the wrong direction. And you saw it and you said, yeah, but the sign says west. So I, I feel like I'm going in the right direction. And you just keep going. And listen, nothing happens. You don't crash. You just get further and further away from your destination. And there is just a point on the road. You know, I mean, sometimes there may be a time to, to you know, a turnabout. Sometimes there might be a right and a left you can take. Sometimes you just have to do just a U-E.Ometimes you just got to just bust a hardcore U-turn right where you are. But it only comes when you get it in your head. This is not right. I am not going in the direction. I am not going to get there. I am going to be late if I continue to do this. And at this moment, you don't look and contemplate another five miles. You start turning immediately. The moment you get it in your head that you are in the wrong direction, the Lord said, this is urgent. This is an urgent appeal because some problems are going to happen if you keep going. Listen, it's going to be too late. There's, there's some things, there's some, some appointments you're not going to make if you keep going in that direction. But listen, it's in Newark and you're headed toward Wilmington. I need you to understand that's not going to work. You're headed toward New York. You're supposed to be going to Philly. So if you're going north, you need to go south. God is saying, make a U-turn right now. No matter where you are in your life, it may seem illegal, but I need you to make a U-turn right now if you know that it might be too late. If you get this, that this is urgent because you now have to do this immediately. You are not in a process of regression. You are in regression. So therefore, how long? you want to stay there well listen you know what i mean i'm gonna go down this road uh because they're saying you know the next turnoff is a mile no unless you got a mile to wait i'm looking both ways and then i'm turning around right there i'm doing whatever kind of u-turn i gotta make but i'm going back in the direction that god has called me to so when you begin to look at this the lord is saying hit reverse and that's what he, you know, he's not leaving this to them. He's actually telling them it's in the other direction. Stop for a second and see that I told you if you get here and you're out of, you're out of the place. If you see this, you're out of place. Look around you for a second and begin to see. And what you will see is no confirmation of your right direction, but a confirmation of your wrong direction. And let me tell you something right now. 
you are deep in the love of God. I'm telling you, God loves you when he is willing to illuminate for you that you're in the wrong direction. Listen, some of the best directions you'll get are not the directions to where the house are. Some of the best directions you'll get are the directions where you, they give you all the things that, that you need to know it to know that you're off. If there's a red barn over there and it's got a little flag on it, you, you know that you're off. Now, listen, you might be tempted to turn left because it looks like there's two lefts. But if you take the left and there's a little doghouse on the right, you, you're going in the wrong direction. Some of those are the best because I'm looking and saying, in my discernment, I think that's the left that they're talking about. Thank God I saw the doghouse and said, oh, let me turn around. That's what we have to be willing to do right now. And then he says, here's the other thing I want you to do. Go back and do the things you did at first. Go back and listen, go back to the basics. We're so deep. You know, we're so smart that we just don't want to go back to the basics. But the Lord said, go back to the things that you did when you first fell in love with me. Because these things are actually, you never grow beyond. I want you to get that. There are things you grow in, but the Lord is not sending them forward. He's sending them back to things that you don't outgrow. You never grow beyond. He's simply saying all the growth you have right now, look at how smart you are. Look at how much you know now. Look at how many books you've read. How many seminars have you been to? And you know what I'm saying to you? I'm not saying, listen, you're at a college level. Go get your master's. You're at a master's level. Go get your, your PhD. He's saying, no, you're at a PhD level. Go back to grade school. Go back to grade school. That's when we were our closest. Before you thought that you were all that. That's, that's when we were our closest. But, you know, before you required everybody to call you by your title. We were, we were at our closest. When it didn't matter. Wait a minute, sir. I think it's Bishop. Wait a minute, sir. It's, it's Deacon. Remember before, before all that? Remember before you had to have your special seat, be before they had to serve you first? Remember when you didn't care whether you got chicken or not, and now you you know, you know throwing a temper tantrum if you don't get your piece because you're supposed to be at the head table? Remember when you didn't even want to be recognized or noticed because you just wanted to be in the number? Before you got to the part now where you had to whisper to somebody, don't forget to let them know that Bishop is back there. Remember those days? So the Lord said, you remember when you used to spend time with me in the Word? I mean, when I'm telling you, when it wasn't a 66 book sleeping pill to you, I mean, now it's like ambient, you know what I mean? I start reading and, whoosh, and so that, that's the prayer of people who've been delivered. That's the prayer of people who had cancer and, and now they don't. That's the prayer of people who were broken and now they aren't. That's the prayer of people who have just been literally empty and now they're full and now they're looking and saying, I'm pastor, I'm struggling reading this book that set me free. I don't know what's going on. You've left your first first love. Remember when you used to wait, you were like David, and when, when David said, and I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Remember when you didn't always complain about people, when you when you didn't hate people, when you when your fellowship wasn't, I'm just here for me. I don't care what these people are, are here for. I'm coming to get my praise on. Remember when it wasn't like that, when you looked around and said, who God used me for somebody today you know what when you didn't come to the church to be blessed you came to the church to bless someone do you remember that when you used to give an offering and you couldn't wait and when they and when there was a need for more you were so overjoyed that you had two more dollars to contribute remember before you start complaining about somebody asking you for anything remember when you start thinking about your job and now you're saying huh now they're gonna want more from me we met you when you didn't have a job we met you when you were unemployable. We met you with the strikes on your, on your resume. When you were trying to figure out, what do I check right here when they say, have you ever had blank? And now that you got yourself together, man, listen, you, you got to be able to look. And I'm not giving props here, but I, I, I want you to see here that Satan has done a masterful job of creating a general sense of satisfaction with these first works because they're so important. He's done a wonderful job and I'm not giving him props because listen, the Lord is breaking the chain, but it is a change and he's mastered this deception by giving every strong wind of doctrine, every false wind, every new move. The believer now is in a place where they're chasing after every new strange program, anything that looks like this will bring about growth and stability. That's the thing that the believer is going after. But I want you to understand, you got to remember that you remember when you used to tell everybody about Jesus and now you got your mouth closed. Listen, our shortened attention span right now gets us easily bored with these things that we look at as baby things. Let's go deeper. 
And the Lord says, listen, you can't get any deeper than this. And, and sometimes we'll do everything, anything except these first works. But the Lord said this. He says, I'm going to come to you quickly. You, you don't want my presence for grace. You don't want my presence to bless you. Well, you'll get my presence. I'm going to come to you quickly. And, but, but I want you to get this. The Lord says, take heed to my command because this is going, this is serious. And the Lord says this, he says this in his word. He says, and I'll remove your lampstand from its place. That that's important because the Lord says, listen, unless you repent, I'll remove your light and my presence. I'll remove your lampstand. He says, I'll come and go. And I want you to get that. That's really the important part here. The Lord says, I'll come and go. The, the power of God in our lives is that he not only is powerful and just to just just him move coming through will be powerful. But the blessing on our lives is that he stays. The blessing on the Christian life is that the Holy Spirit is not afar off. The blessing of the believer is that the Lord takes up residence on the inside of us and causes us to shine as a light unto the world. So when the Lord comes and says, if you don't do this quickly, and this is not a process because you are already here, this is not that's going to happen. It's not prophetic. He's saying, listen, I'm telling you right now to examine yourself because you are already in the state of regression, not the process of regression. The love is start. You're really going to get deceived and going to find more work to do and more good things to do and forget to look at your heart again. To you, You've not guarded it. You guarded it from people. But you're not guarded against this attitude. So he says, listen, I'm going to come and I'm going to remove your light and I'm going to remove my presence. Now, I want you to I want you to see this because this is really important. The, the Lord has said this. And I started out this uh, afternoon talking about this great commission that we have. Here's what the Lord said. You know, in Acts, he says, and when the Holy Ghost comes, you're going to receive power. And, and when you receive that power, you'll be able to be witnesses for me. In, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the uttermost parts of the world. That's what he says. He says, when you receive this power, you will be empowered to speak on my behalf, right? Not able to speak on my behalf, but divinely empowered with divine ability to be effective for me. That's what he's actually saying. Listen, if you have a mouth, you can imitate someone. So he's obviously not saying, well, you'll be able to say Jesus on, you know, on my behalf. No, no, no. He's saying, I'm going to make you effective. The church is going to grow. It's going to make the inroads in the communities it's supposed to. It's going to effectively be the ark of safety that it's designed to be. And when the gates of hell of master armies against it, they will not be able to prevail against it. But if you stay in this loveless state, if you decide to be an organization and not an organism, then he says you will lose the ability to be an effective witness for me now some churches will close down some churches will just shut down completely but the, and, and listen I'm gonna tell you right now I think that the ones that shut down there's grace still there they, God is simply saying I'm not gonna let you do it I'm just gonna stop you listen let me let me tell you when it gets when it gets ugly when it gets scary is when the church doesn't shut down is when you continue to go and celebrate the 30th and 40th and 50th and 60th year anniversary. And when, when you look at the building, it's been there 100 years. And in reality, the Lord says, there's no light here. There's no me here. This, my presence is gone. You, you guys own the building, so you can, you can keep the building. Listen, you've got your religion going, so you can keep the religion going. But you have lost your power and effectiveness. People come in here and go out like the YMCA. People walk in and they walk out like they do at the welfare office. They, they, they walk in needing something. They get what they need, but they're hooked again on having to come back and they still need again. You don't increase them. You just maintain them in brokenness. Listen, welfare system is not meant to increase you. It just maintains you in brokenness. There are plenty of places out here that, that make that keep you at this one spot where you really can't. I mean, the pro 
programs are designed so that you don't get out of them. And there are church programs that don't have that have no knowledge that since the presence of God is gone and the light is gone, darkness has free reign and is able to imitate light. The angel of darkness transforms himself into the angel of light. So I'm not going to stop you from preaching the right stuff. But since there's no love here, there'll be no growth. There'll be no increase. You might see more people even in some cases, but that's the difference between swelling and growth. And so when you begin to look at this, the Lord says, I'm going to remove your lampstand. And you can stay in organization, but you'll no longer be a true church. And listen, I'm going to close out here. And, and, and this is this is this is really important. And, and I want you to get this, you know, as we're all kind of in this thing together, we're moving in a, in a, in a fresh and, and new direction. And, you know, God is doing fresh and new things, you know, and he said these words, he said, arise and shine. For your light has come. Now, he doesn't say arise and shine because your light's going to come. But he says arise and shine for your light has come. I don't know who I, I'm, I'm talking to today, but I know that there's some people that needed to hear this word and, and needed to hear that there's an ember still burning, that the word of God, of God here is not you're done. It's over. The word of God is I see what the enemy's trying to do. I'm exposing his plan right in front of you. You're still my co-worker, my co-laborer, and I've done my part. Now do your part. Rise. See, listen, and I want you to get this. He says, rise and shine. And that's unexpected. Listen, if you've been down, if you've been out of place, if you've been marginalized, if you've been ostracized, if you dug a ditch yourself and threw yourself in it, it seems like the light is gone. But the Lord looked at this church in Ephesus and he saw us. And he recognized the community that we're in. And he saw us. And he saw how we can get beat down. And we can just determine, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And we're thinking that we're doing the right thing. And don't realize, God, I left you back here. And I saw the people and I saw their need, but I forgot about you. And, and I saw all the issues that are in the world. And I tried to run toward those and I forgot about you. And not about you as a healer. And as a deliverer and as a way maker, but as God, as a friend, as the lover of my soul. And the last thing we want to do is to be like that church of Ichabod. Listen, you know what? There, there was a point, you know, when you begin to look at what that story is all about. Uh, Eli in, in the book of Samuel had heard news that the army of Israel had been destroyed. And as soon as he heard the commotion and they came in and told him that the armies of the Lord had been destroyed and, and that even his sons had died in this in this battle. The Bible says he fell back and he, and he broke his neck and he died there. But his daughter in law was about to give birth. And when she heard about the armies of the Lord and when she heard about her father in law. And when she heard about the death of her own husband, a nursemaid came in and she said, don't despair. You've given birth to a son. And you know what she said? So what? I'm going to name him Ichabod. For the glory of the Lord has departed. What a sad moment to be able to recognize he's gone. The Lord has left. I missed my moment. But your moment is here today for the glory of the Lord has not departed. I still come with good news today that victory can still be yours, that overcoming is still yours and you have access to that box. Praise him where you are. Worship him where you are and remember from whence you've fallen because the moment you remember, you can get up again. And I see you rising right now, wherever you are, just rise up. This is your moment. My hope is that you were blessed by this word today. My hope is that you receive this word today.
and that for those that want to come into the fold and that are looking and saying, Lord, I need to be saved. I don't want to be in this dead place. I want you to understand that you can just come into his life and everything that I spoke, everything that I said pertains to you. That if you simply just open up your mouth and ask the Lord, come into my heart. And this isn't just for you, that even believers that, that have believed him, that, that know that their heart is not in the right place, that you have the ability right now to be able to say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me because I don't want your glory to depart. So listen, I want you to take this word with you today and I want you to make sure you share this word with everybody you can. And all you've got to do is just press it. But there may be people that you want to tag in this, people specifically that you feel like will be blessed by this. Don't hesitate because we want to we want as many people as possible to hear this word and know this. We'll be here again on Thursday in Bible study, tackling another one of these churches and hearing what the Lord is saying. My prayer is that you'll receive the refiner's fire today, that you will receive this bath in, 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 in hyssop today. That you'll see that he has not come with a whip, but has come with a feather. And th that is our God. And so as he has promised to come and say, listen, if you don't get this right, I remove your candlestick. Let us come together in unison and say, Lord, we hear you. We repent before you. We are on fire again. So have an awesome, awesome Sunday. And listen, don't forget this. We always appreciate your support here at Disciples of Faith. If this church has blessed you, and if you want to sow a seed into this ministry, we want to make sure that you have a way to sow. We don't look at sowing seed as any kind of sales gimmick, but I recognize based upon the teaching of the scripture that seed sowing is not only a Christian principle, but it is a blessing principle. It is one of the ways that the Lord has the desire to bless us. And the Lord has actually told us that, listen, Give and it should be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over. Will he cause men to give into your bosom? Money's nothing if we're not in the love of God. So let's make sure that we focus. But if we, when we support ministries, we're actually saying yes to the very action that the, the Lord has promised to protect in the earth. He says, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your seed. We thank you for your attention. We thank you for sharing. Have an awesome Sunday. God bless you.